more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. Yo, top billing to ya. I top billing. A little something, something here. Just to pass the time. This is what I like to do. Sometimes I'll just sit up here, man. Be like 30 minutes and I'll just be looking at Wink Martindale fabricated pressure schemes. <laughs> I love Wink Martindale because he harkens back to the days of my all time favorite defensive coordinator. And that is Rex Ryan. I have multiple Rex Ryan books. I swear by that dude. You can say anything you want about that man, but you cannot say he isn't the absolute truth when it comes to defensive football and being, in my opinion, the premier defensive mind in the sport. Now, with that being said, Wink Martindale, man, he's a chip off the old block there. Obviously, we know about his time. I first heard of Wink Martindale from my man Rob Ryan, Rex Ryan's brother, him being the linebackers coach for him. And now the roles are reversed. Wink Martindale, what, 15 years later or something like that, is the defensive coordinator. And, of course, Martindale has Ryan as his damn inside linebackers coach here with the Baltimore Ravens, the hardest franchise in the league. Now, some of these fabricated pressure schemes, while I like them, obviously, I played on the defensive side of the ball, started off as a running back, switched to defense, played linebacker safety. The last time I played, oh man, it's a semi professional league, a feeder league for indoor football. And we ran a scheme that was an even front scheme, but it was a weird even front scheme. It was a 4-4 four, four scheme. So a lot of standing linebackers, right, four guys. You still had, like, your normal even front, but it was two guys standing up on the line of scrimmage. I was back off ball at a linebacker spot, so I was pretty much like Patrick Queen moved from safety because it is a middle field closed defense. There's only one safety in a 4-4 four, four defense. But you can do a lot of different things with that type of a scheme with fabricated pressure because all these guys are standing up. Wink Martindale's defense at his core is an odd front defense, obviously rooted it with an odd front alignment, but there are variables in it that are very much from an even front scheme. And when I last played in that particular scheme, whenever they would call these fabricated pressure packages, man, it was like Christmas, right? Like a little kid at a candy store, Everybody would get all excited. We had this thing called Avalanche, um, but this is a little bit more intricate in some of the stuff that he's doing because they're taking some very high risks. You want to always make sure that every quadrant of the field is accounted for, but if you look at what they're doing here, man, if anyone messes up, this could be six. You got Pernell McPhee up here going against Panay Sewell. He busts his ass, right? <laughs> you make him look a little bit community-ish, if you know what I'm saying right there. He takes an inside move on him. Calais Campbell at a zero, he splits the difference, and he's getting quick pressure in Jared Goff's face. Going to have Owe with a bull rush on the right tackle going through him uh, with one hand, too. This looks hard. Tyus Bowser here. These are just line of scrimmage players that are normally line of scrimmage players. When If you see them, you know what they're going to normally do. He's going to check and then work the flat. But somehow Deshaun Elliott also is working – Looks like the flat as well. And Marla Hump, I think he shoots it to the outside. Probably more of their quarters coverage. And Smith here, my man Jimmy Smith. How the hell old is Jimmy Smith? Granddaddy Jimmy here. He shoots that bad boy. First, it looks like he's closing out the middle of the field. And he shoots it to the right, almost like Marla Hump there. This is made by my boy right here. My hokey, Chuck Clark. Got to get me a Chuck Clark. Somebody, if you got a Chuck Clark jersey, send it to your boy. I don't know where that Chuck Clark jerseys are found, but I want a Chuck Clark. Chuck Clark actually closes off the middle of the field here, right? So he posts, and then you have man coverage going on on the tight end who's running, looks like a scene. Pat Queen shoots it to there. So if you look here, everything should virtually be accounted for, all quadrants of the field. This is tough to deal with with your post-snap read. If you had a different key, look at that. That's beautiful. It's layered. And Tavon Young coming. I didn't even say nothing about that because I wanted y'all to be thinking like, oh, who's going to get it there? It's a four-man rush, but what makes it is the layered rush Tavon Young here. <laughs> Off screen. That is hard. Think about that right there for your pre-snap read. Everybody coming right here. Now, look. It only ends up being four people coming. See? Right? 
O.A. Campbell, McPhee, and then Tavon Young. Still just a, a regular organic four-man pressure. But look, closed off right here on your shallow shallow zone. Chuck Clark shooting it to the middle of the field here. And you got Elliott and, Elliot and Bowser working the same quadrant of the field for some odd reason there. Actually, yes, they start to work the same quadrant of the field, so they both have flat right here in case the ball is dumped off to Philly flyer DeAndre Swift here. But a combination of man coverage and some zone spots right there, pretty much all quadrants are accounted for. That is a great fabricated pressure screen. Salute to Wink Martindale, man. Let's get it. This is my favorite one right here. I absolutely love this. Obviously, my hokey Chuck Clark. He gets the cheese on this one here, but this is made through layers and through extreme deception and having all gaps covered as well as having all quadrants occupied. Let's go ahead and, and, and diagram out what the offense is doing. So you're going to have a square in here by Quintet Cephas. You're going to have Hawkinson here. He's running a corner route. My man, Philly Flyer DeAndre Swift right here. He's on a whip route. And then you're going to have a shallow cross right here from the slot receiver. But check this out. The Ravens counter this is how, how are you going to deal with something like this? First and foremost is zero coverage. So that takes away a tell from a quarterback. First thing you going to want to do is check those safeties. One of your first keys there, and they already eradicated that. So going on to your next one here, let's diagram this out. Got Cephas here on a square end. Hawkinson on a corner, slot receiver on a drag. My man Philly Flyer here on a whip route. DeAndre Swift on a whip route there. But the counter to this is, <laughs> what are you going to do here? There was no tell there. First of all, you have the normally the close side safety, Chuck Clark. He's mugged up at a two technique. You have your normal edge player, your outside linebacker, edge linebacker, Tyus Bowsner, he's mugged up by the zero technique. And you have at a three technique, Patrick Queen. But guess what these guys are doing? None of this shit that it looked like they should be doing. They're going to be running a three man weave here off of Bowser. He's going to come all the way flying around damn near the D gap. You're going to have Chuck Clark here, right? He's on a he's on a zone bluff. He's going to bluff like he's going to be running the hook zone, and then he's going to come. So that bluff right there uh, layers it to where he's coming at a little bit slower pace than everyone else not the pace that he will actually be coming he just rushes after them and then you'll have Deshaun Elliott of course your normal field safety or the safety who covers the most grass normally at least by standard measure he would come in right behind Chuck Clark <laughs> so that's the three man weave right there and then you'll have let's go back to this you'll have Pat Queen here He's going to be running matchup zone. Anybody who comes up in his zone, he's going to match it to a certain standpoint. Then it gets outside of him. He'll let that go, which would be this drag route right here. So he lets the drag route go because you got Anthony Averett right here. He's going to be working uh, one-fourth coverage, but they're not getting that deep. And the same thing right here for my boy Marlon Hump. He's going to be shooting that back there. Tavon Young here, right? He ends up being pretty much a quarter safety. Right, so he'll have man coverage, and I think he'd be working right here going against Hawkinson, who was running that corner route. And then you have your normal rushes from Calais Campbell, who was normally on the inside, but he playing him in a damn seven technique. And Owe right here rushing against Panay Sewell. whole lot of different people doing a whole bunch of different shit. Even got Dalen Hayes right here working kind of hook zone as well. But the cheese right here, Jimmy Smith shoots it all the way over here. And then he becomes kind of a quarter safety as well. A lot of shit going on from your man, Wink Martindale. I absolutely love it. Check this out. Look at that. Right before the snap, Jimmy Smith shoots over there. But look, too much going on to try to decipher. And it's too quick of a hitting play. One more time right here. First of all, look at Chuck Clark. Chuck Clark buffing like he's about to get back to hook zone, right? Just that one little step there, and then he's coming around. Look at that. He ends up coming around because um, Owe right here takes an inside approach. He comes around Owe. Jamal Williams ends up working off the inside, so there's not too many people to block. They left one person alone right here 
their guard did, and then look, it's Chuck Clark coming too fast. Damn, that's crazy. Look at Patrick Queen right here. Carried this this uh, shallow cross route right here to a certain point, and then he backs up off of it to lay in his zone, which would see him have to work against this by the time probably Jerry Goff wanted to try to come here or there or whatever like that. It's just not enough time, man. Such a quick hitting play, such a layered play, just one of those well-defined, well-executed Wink Martindale specials. I say that to say this, the Denver Broncos I feel can be had with fabricated pressure, particularly on the inside of his offensive lines. We see right here, Blake Martinez, Looks like he may have rushed Teddy Bridgewater into a little bit of a throw right there from the New York Giants game. Just running a little bit of what you would consider almost a TT twist right there since he was originally lined up at the tackle spot. But you can see the uh, guard here, I'm sorry, or the center here, my man Lloyd Cushenberry right there, just preoccupied with his original assignment right there. Doesn't give Bridgewater enough time to really get this throw off here. He overshoots it. Same deal right here. You can see a little bit of layered pressure. They're sending five on this one, right? So five-man pressure scheme. Got man coverage there going on there. And you see somebody comes loose here because the right guard right here is preoccupied with his, with his original assignment as well to not be able to get this uh, this stunt that they have going on right there with Lorenzo Carter coming free. And I think that actually rushes Bridgewater into almost a pick right here. The safety coming over. Xavier McKinney almost getting himself a pick. So, but Denver is a damn good team, man. I love how they're occupied or or their base is there for having that rooted in that quick game, but rooted in that rushing game. So it's going to be all about tackling Javante Williams and of course Melvin Gordon. But they will put that thing in the air with the quick game, and they will take their shots down the field. And I think Teddy Bridgewater is a very good quarterback who can dice you up. If you're not getting that pressure on him, but they have to play the Ravens, man. And the Ravens are that team. I cannot wait to see how this game plays out. I expect Baltimore to come up out of there with a win, but it's not going to be easy by any stretch of the imagination. Much respect to the Denver Broncos and my man, Teddy Bridgewater. Hopefully Lamar Jackson, Action Jackson himself is all right. We are talking about his back and his neck and my neck and my back and my neck and my back. All that. Like, come on, bro. We got to get you out there. You got to let you out there and heat up mile high, baby. All right. With that being said, it's your boy Murph, the Underground King. As always, thank you for your quality support for those who have been sending it in. I need more support for my Ravens fans out there. Uh, make sure you guys send in your quality support, man, so you can be on the par with the guys who are doing it throughout the district. Throughout Maryland, and of course, my beloved Commonwealth of Virginia, where I'm talking to you from Bristol, Virginia, baby. I am the man, the Underground King. With that being said, peace. What more can I say? Top billing. Top.